know I'm a bulldog. So Georgia, who won't pick it? I love the family atmosphere and the way they handle business. Education is important. Trying to reach the next level. I want the best in life. I never. What's up, everybody? Dognation.com before the hedge is brought to you by Kroger. That is my guy, Cortez James, been real with the theme song right now. And guys, we are right now in the middle of you could probably tell it, call it go time right now for the 2025 recruiting cycle. I am of the belief that I think uh, the recruiting, the main work, all most of the hay in the barn now takes place maybe March, maybe April, uh, going all the way until June, July. I think that's the meat of the recruiting season. Um, And I think our show's topic today kind of hits that bullseye in terms of Georgia Clemson. Those two programs are going to play on August the 31st in Mercedes-Benz Stadium, uh, but they're going to probably duke it out, go head-to-head about six or seven times on the recruiting trail. Prior to that, I am also of the belief uh, that that those two battles, those two teams going at it, will determine something very significant for Georgia in the 2025 class. We'll get to that as part of our Big Five. First of all, where are my manners? This is the South, of course. Wanted to say uh, hello to everybody out there. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are having a great Wednesday uh, so far, if you guys want to know about Georgia Bulldog football recruiting for the 2025 class, uh, we got you. That's what we like to say here on this show. I got you. Uh, we're going to talk about a lot of things. We're going to talk about some five-star cutdowns. We're going to talk about, we're going to have a Dog Nation conversation with a prospect in the 2026 class that I think is an absolute monster prospect I think the uh, recruiting services are holding one more of his stars, but you see him, you listen to him a little bit. You're going to learn he's related to a member of the Georgia football team right now. Um, You're going to watch him work out and you're going to say, yep, that's about as good as it gets as his position in any class. That's going to be one of our dog nation conversations. We have two big five-star cut downs, top schools list to talk about. That's going to be interesting. You're going to hear from five-star the five-star offensive tackle David Sanders Jr. is part of that. Uh, you're also going to hear from a lot. You're also gonna, we're also going to discuss the recent top schools list for Elijah Griffin. That's only ten stars worth of uh, ten stars worth of uh, countdowns. Top schools list right there. But first, I think we've teed it up enough. Let's just go ahead and hit that thing down the fairway with our big five. Let's talk about them dogs. And the Clemson Tigers, uh, the, like I said earlier, they're going to play in. It's a uh, one of those annual kickoff. Uh, insert your sponsor name here. Of course, it's sponsored, but sometimes we hear the words of Brandon Adams in our ear when our when we're live about giving away free plugs on our programs. But that thing in Mercedes-Benz Stadium, it's probably going to be Georgia's going to be preseason number one. I imagine Clemson's going to be somewhere around fifteen to twenty, depending on maybe some juice or buzz in the coming out of uh, AC, ACC Media Days and also the summer. You're going to have a really good matchup there. It's going to be uh, – everybody hypes it up. Georgia Clemson has been great for forever. Some historic games. I'll never forget watching the first kind of real juice I got from Thomas Davis was I was watching Thomas Davis. Georgia was in Clemson. It was so very hot that day. Thomas Davis dropped off some groceries, kind of Willie Beeman, steaming Willie Beeman style. Uh Hat tip uh, to uh, any given Sunday right there for you guys that have seen that movie. But uh, then he went out and played like a monster, played like a madman, played like the Thomas Davis we would all get uh, to see for years and years and years on Saturdays and Sundays in the NFL. But uh, that game is going to be big, but it's probably not going to be any bigger than Georgia versus Clemson on the recruiting trail. There are going to be some battles, five stars, top targets, Lots of guys on the top targets list. And I really have to say this. I think Georgia versus Clemson on the recruiting trail is largely going to determine whether the dogs can go back to back 2024 and 2025 as the number one recruiting class in the country. There are a lot of, a lot of very big recruiting battles between those two schools. Um, Some of them, there's, there's so many, we can't even pack them onto this list, but we put together Uh, Thanks to our great graphics guru, 
I uh, like that alliteration there. Great graphics guru girl, uh, Kaylee Mansell. We got Tigers versus Dogs in 2025. You want to call it a bare knuckle brawl? You want to call it a steel cage match? You want to call it a heavyweight fight? You want to call it recruiting at the elite level at its finest? Take a look at this and look at the two, two top top two names at the at the top of that list right there. Elijah Griffin out of Savannah, Georgia, number one DT, number four overall. David Sanders Jr., number one offensive tackle, and number two overall. DJ Pickett, number three corner and number seven overall. Georgia and Clemson are kind of both in his Pickett's final five right there, top five right there, his official visits list. He probably, I could see him going to LSU there, but nonetheless, the Dogs and the Tigers are deep in that one. And Quentin Fegans, uh, he's got official visits set to both Georgia and and Clemson, that's the number three safety in the country. Bryce Davis out of Greensboro, North Carolina. The number six DL, the number 41 overall prospect. He's out of the same high school uh, that Jamal Ja, Big Ja Jarrett uh, came out of. And, you know, Bryce is going to visit Georgia. I believe he's got a two-day week in visit coming up in the middle of the month. And then he's already got his official visit locked in. Isaiah Gibson, his former teammate Vic Burley, is currently at Clemson out of Warner Robins, Georgia, another top 100 overall prospect, the number eight edge, Christian Garrett. He's got two officials set up. Clemson is his first official visit. Clemson's got one of those May 31st to, I believe, June the 2nd weekends, June the 1st weekends, where they try to rally all their top commitments, their top targets, and try to really close the class and build the class that first official official visit weekend, uh, June weekend of this summer. And then another one for, for measure's sake, you got Mason Short out of Evans High School in Evans, Georgia. He's an Evans Knight out of the CSRA. Former Alabama commitment. You know, you got Mason with Ohio State, Georgia, Clemson. A lot of these guys, I can point to one, two, three. I can point to four or five guys on this list that I believe ultimately it's going to come down to Georgia or Clemson in the 2025 class for one of these guys. And do the dogs go three and two? Do they go five and zero? Oh? Do they go six and zero? Oh? Do they, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight? There's eight names right there. Uh, Georgia goes four and four. Maybe LSU takes Pickett, but Georgia goes three and three. Uh, you know, that's probably minimum of what the dogs need to do here, especially if they want to finish with the nation's number one class in 2025, like they did in 2024. So, if you guys. And it, you, what, what is it they say in football? The most important game is the next game. Well, there's some symmetry here. Remember how Georgia used to have the number one recruiting class? They had the number one team, and there was some symmetry in that front. Well, now Tigers versus Dogs, Dogs versus Tigers, all over the recruiting trail, all through those official visits, all through those unofficial visits, that storyline is going to dominate this summer. And then when August 31st rolls around in the bins, those two teams are going to take on each other on the field after they basically blooded their knuckles all summer long on the recruiting trail. Guys, that is number one right here on our Dog Nation's Big Five here on Before the Hedge is brought to you by Kroger. Guys, Kroger is coming at you. You know it's that time of year. They took care of you for Valentine's Day. They're going to take care of you for Easter, all the Easter grass, all the peeps, Whatever your favorite Easter candy is, they're going to take care of you. You know you need to go to Kroger to get everything going. Number two here on our number two here on our Dog Nation. Uh, before the hedge is brought to you by Kroger. Let's talk about early signing day. Now, guys, we were talking about this earlier. Well, just last week there was there was the indicator I gave you guys that something was afoot with early signing day. They were going to change it. They were going to move it around. Well. Number two on here before the hedge is brought to you by Kroger. Number two story this week we feel like is the early signing day just got a lot, just got even earlier. Here's what they're looking to do right now. We got to, I know every, some people are visual learners. They like to see a PowerPoint. They like to see a slide. Let's take a look right here at what's going on. NCA rule changes for early signing day. You got a lot going on right there. You've got um, the early signing period as of now is going to move up two weeks to the first week of December. That was the conference commissioners, coalition, something like that. They came out, news leaked out today that they're moving up early signing day from 
December 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, somewhere around around there. I've seen it as late as the 20th and the 21st. That's now moving up two weeks to the first week of December. Target date's going to look something like December 4th, December 5th, after the regular season, but the week of the conference championship games. Now, there's a lot of people that are going to have an opinion about this. They're going to say, uh, that's in the middle of high school football. Can you imagine like a team like a Buford, a team like a Gainesville, a team like a Douglas County, a team like a Walton or a Milton signing guys on a Wednesday when maybe they're in the dome on Friday or Saturday, that's going to be hectic. I know some naysayers will say, well, that's only going to happen with, you know, 15 teams every, every year that would still be playing in the state playoffs. Uh, that's only going to affect a very few amount by and large. It's not going to affect most of high school football, but they're moving it up. The reason why they're doing that is twofold. Number one, it is going to be a mess with the transfer portal window opening up and the college football playoff with 12 teams alive, alive in the big dance. That way the early signing period happens the first week of December. That's a way for college rosters to know they're going to be set. They're going to know what their position groups are going to look like. They're going to know what their depth is going to look like before they go shopping in the transfer portal in mid-December, as well as trying to win uh, three, four more games, two, three, four more games during the college football playoff. Now, here's what's not changing. The traditional signing day still is going to take place on the first Wednesday in February. Um, And that's, you know, what I kind of think, I kind of think that, uh, I kind of think that when you look at all this right there, I've always thought that the traditional signing day, the February, uh, the February period, I think it's kind of more like a dinosaur to me in my mind these days. Uh, but that's sticking. If people still want to do that, even though like 90% of the 98% of the classes are now all signed by the early period, they still have a chance to do that. If you guys were following Georgia on this program the last two cycles. I think there's basically been one or two targets per cycle left that Georgia was looking at to the traditional signing day in February. Now, they decided all that. The one thing they haven't decided yet is the summer signing day. That's to be determined. And you've got folks that are sitting there going, do it in late July. That's when most late June or late July, that's when most of the players are committing now. Uh, everybody's going to know what their offers are, what their shot is, what their spot is with a lot of their class. Now, if they do the summer signing day, it goes without saying that they need to have an out clause for the prospect. If they sign somewhere, their head coach leaves, their position coach leaves, or their coordinator leaves. They got to gotta give them an out for that, uh, even prior to the transfer portal and everything else, for them to get out to be released from that um, scholarship they signed during the early period. So that's something that's up in the air. I've talked to a lot of coaches about this, talked to a lot of high school coaches, college coaches about this, recruits and their parents. They worry about this because uh, there's a lot of them that feel like they'd be ready to go and they'd get it out of their way. And to them, their commitment was the same thing as signing. But a lot changes between June and December, July and December of a player's senior year. They get a lot better. Um, They go through their senior season. Um, and quite frankly, a couple of really savvy coaches are really r- coaches that I, I trust their opinion a lot. They're worried about it's going to open up a box, open up a Pandora, where if a young man signs in July and he's not really feeling his high school workouts, he's not really feeling his high school team or his high school coach anymore, that they can just opt out of this senior year. I know Georgia has kind of verbalized in the past that they – gave a verbal scholarship offer or those official offers that came out on August 1st or September the 1st, that was contingent on them finishing their senior year. So that's something to monitor. But you know some people out there are going to try to take advantage of that. And that's what worries a lot of high school coaches around around the country, actually. So you've got that going on right there with the NCAA and the early uh, uh, and the early out of that. So coming out of this, we've got um, – A lot of talk right here. Now, one of those things I'd like for you to think about is, you know, what do you think works? What do you think is a dinosaur, like I said? What do you think still matters in uh, this day and age? Kind of think about that for a little bit and kind of file uh, file that away. We're going to come back to that 
uh, later in your program, later in our program. And if you know what that means, that means uh, that sounds to me, smells to me like we might have a question of the week coming out of that topic right now. Uh, early signing day, big change. They're moving it up. Just got a little bit earlier. I thought that was significant enough to talk about on our show on Before the Hedges brought to you by Kroger tonight. Next up, uh, guys, over the last few days, we saw two major five stars. I, I would call them the pillar, the pillars of the Georgia 2025 recruiting targets, the top targets. You saw two five stars, very most wanted targets uh, in the class, both David Sanders Jr. and Elijah Griffith. They dropped their top schools list. Let's start right now with David Sanders Jr., the number one offensive tackle in the country, the number two overall prospect in the country. He has finalized the top six. He says it will be one of those six. He told me he's going to visit him in the spring for unofficials. He's going to come back again and visit him in the fall, in the summer for his official visits, trying to, trying to kind of work his way down and maybe have a decision ready prior to his senior year. That's not said or anything like that. But it feels to me, sounds to me like that's the expectation they're trying to do right now. They won't commit before they're ready. David won't commit before he's ready. But he would like to get a lot of work in. And really, he told me that uh, he feels that the spring unofficials where he gets to go shadow the offensive line coach, he gets to run around on the field, he gets to be embedded with the team on a spring practice day in the meetings, in their workouts, Uh, he gets to see how the his potential position coaches are going to uh, get after it and what their coaching styles look looks like. And he's going to sit there and he's going to let it germinate in his head whether or not that's a good fit for what he wants to see at the college level. You want to know what else David Sanders said? Well, let's just jump into a Dog Nation conversation right here. I, I took the time to talk to David Sanders over the weekend about his decision. And let's kind of, I pulled out some kind of choice moments that I want you to pay attention to right here, right now, on Before the Hedges. We have Tennessee, Georgia, Clemson, South Carolina, Ohio State, and Alabama. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I guess, I mean, obviously, you know, everything I've heard, everything I know, Clemson is right there and there for you. Like, why why is Clemson special to you? Right. Um, yeah, like I said in other interviews, for sure, Clemson has that that heart string, I would say, because I remember as a little kid just sitting in front of the TV watching them run down the hill. You know, it's Monday night, National Championship night, and I'm in fifth grade, and I'm begging my mom to let me stay up past my bedtime to watch them play in the wow. National Championship. So, you know, just things like that really stuck out to me the most when I was getting recruited by Clemson, just those memories as a little kid, uh, just remembering seeing Dabo on the screen running down the tunnel with his players. And, you know, now that I'm in the position to, to go visit and, and talk to these current players, it's just like a dream come true for me. So um, I love Coach Sweeney and everything he's done with that program, you know, to this point. Um, with Coach Luke, that addition was amazing. You know, he's from Georgia. He's, he's had that experience of winning national championships, you know, coaching some of the best guys um, in the country. So. He signed five of the number one offensive tackles in, in his time coaching. So, you know, he told me he wanted to make it six. So we'll, mm. we'll, we'll see about that. And just everything he does, you know, is very unique. Uh, he brings a great energy to recruiting, and I'm sure he brings that same type of energy into his coaching, his coaching style. So I'm looking forward to getting up there during the spring and, and getting to sit down and talk to him some more. Uh, I guess let's talk about the red and black. Why does uh, Georgia, Cyril's and Smart crack the list here for you? Um, for sure. I mean, obviously everyone knows it's no secret that Georgia's always been one of the top schools that, that I've been considering. I mean, you can't neglect the fact that they're back-to-back national champions. They're known for taking five-star talent and, and maintaining that five-star all the way up to through college and making their first-round draft picks, you know. Um, so that's just something you just can't look past. Uh, Coach Searles, Coach Smart, they do a great job with recruiting, recruiting-wise. Uh, I feel like some, some schools in their position would definitely take that opportunity for granted. But I feel like they, they, they're so humble with it, and they don't really give off that, that cocky vibe like we – we are Georgia. You have to come play for us. I mean, they really are taking it serious and building those relationships, but not only me, but with my family. Uh, so, so that's been something huge for me with Georgia. 
um, knowing I can go get developed by the best, compete against the best each and every day, and be surrounded by like-minded individuals. So um, yeah. the University of Georgia is one of those those great schools I, I, that are definitely at the top of the list for me and, and, and just love everything about them. But being around them in the spring multiple times for practices, getting a few coach roles, interact with the players, how do they respond to him, things like that, that will be a true testament on, on how he is as, as, a, as a person and as a coach. And then, you know, we'll have some fun during the official. But I feel like the most important visit is going to be the spring visit that I have seeing them in practice and seeing if, if that style of, of coaching or that style of play even even fits me. But as of right now, Georgia has checked all the boxes as far as recruiting, as far as fit and everything. So it's been amazing. There you go. That's two teams that I feel are right up at the top right there for David Sanders. You Listen to that part. Uh, replaying it back a little bit, how he said Clemson tugs on that heartstring. Uh, he likes the fact that, you know, Matt Luke brings a lot of energy in recruiting. He wants to see what Luke is like coaching his guys on the field. And then Georgia kind of checks every box. Georgia has been a top school for him for a very long time. They've always made him feel like a priority. He knows that he will be would be developed at Georgia. He knows that uh, there's just so many players there. The development's going to be there. They're going to win. And, you know, that's what he's looking for, you know, one of the many things he's looking for with the right fit for him at the next level. He wants to feel a familiarity. He wants to win. He wants to really, really know his position coach, and he really wants to know uh, the guys on the program there. So David Sanders, a special football player. I know we, we kind of say these guys are the very best each and every cycle, but with a guy like David Sanders, you just need to elevate that a little bit because there are players, they're not players, trust me on this, guys, there are not players that come out every cycle quite as talented, both on the field, off the field. He's a three-time state champion. He was the Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of North Carolina as a junior. Very hard to do when you're an offensive tackle. That's how special a football prospect David Sanders is. Uh, we wrote about him over the weekend. Uh, we thought it was a big top six to drop. He went all the way down from 43 offers, I believe, down to six schools. That was very, very hard for him and his family to do. They've been thinking about it for months. And really, all the amount of traffic that came through Providence Day in Charlotte kind of convinced them that they're just too much right now. David told me it was kind of like not drinking through a fire hose, but drinking through a dam, and he had to cut it down and start working off six so he could still have a real recruiting process without feeling kind of drowning in a lot of college attention. Uh, Very uh, special football player there, David Sanders, Jr., the five-star, nation's number one offensive tackle and the number two overall prospect by most of the services, the consensus of services in 2025. He also told me that uh, his shoulder is all but repaired. I believe he's going to be fully cleared the second week of March to just go abuse every weight in the Providence Day weight room. Uh, and get back to, you know, everything that's made him a great football player, the work ethic, the training he's, he had. He put off season-ending torn labrum surgery, surgery on his torn labrum, to go be a part of a three-time state championship 3 P team for the Chargers of Providence Day. And another good element here, I know a lot of people wonder about David Sanders. I know we had a Josh Petty update a couple weeks back on Before the Hedges about – five-star offensive tackles and their waistlines. David tells me he's up to 276, which is great. He's ahead of schedule. He wanted to be by 270 by August, 275 by August. Uh, He wants to be around 285, 290 for his senior year, and that would be gleeful for all. I mean, all these schools would take David Sanders no matter what, but if he's 285, 290 by his senior year, that puts him in a position, as very hard as that may sound, in the trenches to play some significant of reps to get some action uh, in big time college football as a freshman because he's that talented and then he would have the weight and the kind of suit of armor allowing him to do so. You want to talk about another prospect that's very, very special in the class of 2025. That would be five-star defensive lineman Elijah Griffin. Elijah Griffin's out of Savannah, Georgia, Savannah Christian, and he took a more, I guess, modest approach to his top schools list. What he did he cut those. He cut his list down from, uh, again, more than 40. Everybody wants Elijah Griffin. Everybody wants to sign Elijah Griffin. But he dropped his top schools, that list, down. Uh, we've got a graphic. We've got a slide here prepared of uh, Elijah right there. 
and uh, he's got it all down to a top 12. You want to call it a dandy dozen? I know some folks would like to see in this day and age, you know, you know, I can hear people in the chat right now. I can watch people in the feed right now in the, ch- in the chat feed going, you know what, talk to me when he's down to eight. Talk to me when he's down to five. Talk to me when he's down to six. I still think it is very significant for Elijah Griffin. You see Clemson there is in his top 12, Georgia, Colorado, LSU, South Carolina, Southern Cal, Oregon. Um, he's got Alabama. He's got the Gators. He's got Louisville. He's got uh, the U. Um, Looks like he also has Duke there in that list as well. So that was pretty significant as well. You're talking about a guy that Georgia's going to recruit with both barrels for as long as it takes. Elijah Griffin, uh, number one defensive lineman in the country. Georgia already has the number two defensive lineman in the country committed in Justice Terry out of Manchester. Uh, Mr. Terry is really pulling hard on that rope to try and tug, to try and pull Elijah Griffin into – into the Athens and in the classic city, but you see two guys right there. You know how it kind of feels like recruiting's ramping up when you te- see really two pillars of the possible Georgia 2025 recruiting class making moves, moving forward with everything they're trying to do right here. Uh, guys, this is the time we've went through two, three, four. You know, Jeff, you got to make sure you keep up with those fingers. But let's go to number five right here. And what I did right here is I wanted to park this guy at number five. This is a young man out of Gainesville High School. Uh, he's a 2026 four-star at the moment. Not even rated everywhere yet. 6'4", probably about 215. Impressive. And I mean this. This is what the number one linebacker in the country looks like when all the services finally get to look at him. He is a cousin. Uh, not a really strong relationship. They don't talk a lot. Uh He's not being hosted by his cousin yet at UGA yet, but I think that will change. Uh, Xavier Griffin out of Gainesville High School. I want you to listen to him. A really hardworking young man. Uh, Already flashes all-world ability. Preview of the story on dognation.com that will go up probably in the morning. But uh, Xavier's head coach, Josh Niblett at uh, Gainesville High School, who has one of the best high school coaches in the country has been one of the best high school coaches in the country for over a decade, long time. He's a hall of famer already at several, uh, I think Blunt County where he won his first high school state championship at Aniana is putting him in their high school hall of fame. Uh, this weekend, he went on to just kill it at Hoover high school. He coached a lot of guys. He coached George Pickens. Um, Josh told me, he said the word special. And that kind of rang true with what I saw when I, when I really, I'd seen the film. I've already started looking at 2026s. If I could put a 2026 top target list, a light, Xavier Griffin would certainly be on that list at Gainesville High School. But with this guy, you see incredible length, positional versatility, and burst. Nibla told me that he compares uh, Xavier Griffin's burst and that closing speed, we're talking about a 10-yard a ten yard burst, you know, that 10-yard sprint that, caught, that, that the NFL Combine wants to see what you're, where you're at at 10 yards, where you're at at 20 yards, because that's really where you play the game of football in those quick closing down, uh, trying to keep guys from scoring, trying to keep guys from getting first downs. Remarkable package of skills here for Xavier Griffin. 2026, like I said earlier in the show, He's going to be a five-star. Those services are just holding that, the, that fifth-star for him right now. I think on three already has him rated as a uh, four-star. But he could be a linebacker. He could be an outside linebacker. He could be that guy that's a stack backer on first and second down, and then he goes and rushes the passer uh, with that great closing speed and that great burst on third down. He certainly found the quarterback a lot on his junior film. I want you to see what I'm talking about right here. This week's Dog Nation conversation on Before the Hedges – is Xavier Griffin at Gainesville High School. Xavier Griffin, I I loved asking this question about great players, man. For you, why do you do it, man? What's your why? When you got to dig deep and coach says you got to do a bunch of 110s, what's the reason why, man? I go go hard for my mom. She sacrificed a lot. She, She always pushed me to keep going. 
So you're somehow related to Malachi Starks at Georgia a little bit. What do you know? Are you cousins? Like, do you talk to him at all? What's that relationship yeah, that's like? That's my cousin. We don't, we don't talk that much. That's my cousin. Have you asked him about Georgia or anything yeah. else like that yet? No. But he, so when you think about Georgia, I know there's a school that likes you a lot. How do you, what, how do you feel about the dogs? How are they recruiting you? Uh, I like, I, I really like the coaching staff. Uh, I like the bond that the players have. Um, I just like, I like what they're building. Like, all the, they produced like the past years. Xavier, what are you looking for in the perfect school, man? What what checks what checks gotta be checked off? Um, a team that has produced the players in my position and a team that I just know is gonna push me hard. A team that has a good program. Type what type of linebacker? If you had to describe yourself, what you try to put down on film, what type of linebacker are you? Like like a player, like a certain. yeah, like what, like what? What are the traits that you hope people pick up to you that matter to you uh, on film? I feel that like I'm ver- I'm versatile. Uh, I play with the edge, but uh, really the versatile part. Like you know, you might see me at middle linebacker, and you might see me on the edge the next play. For you, everybody's got to get better. Football's culture of getting better. How do you got to get better as a junior man to be an even better player than you were last year? Uh, I've been trying to trying to gain weight, you know, get stronger. Uh, to get bigger, faster, stronger, uh, really like working, working on tackling more too. Yeah. Xavier Griffin, Gainesville High Red Elephant, beautiful facilities here, man. Thank you for some time. Yes, sir. Thank you. Appreciate you. What's up, everybody? That's Xavier Griffin. Did you see that? Did you watch him? Did you, see, did you watch that workout? Do you watch how quickly he changes direction? You see that length? You see that speed? Uh, I mean, really, that is rare. It is very rare. I think. He's been offered by Georgia. He's been to Georgia a couple of times. He loves what he sees at Georgia. We'll go a little bit more in depth there. Uh, He's actually a native of Huntsville, Alabama, and the Alabama Crimson Tide. The Tide just offered him, I believe, about 10 days ago, something like that. So, obviously, we mentioned Georgia and Clemson. Well, that's the kind of flavor of the summer, which will be the storyline of the the recruiting storyline of the summer. But, it's a tale as old as time. Bama and Georgia on their recruiting trail. Xavier Griffin, really special football player. You want to talk about a guy that will be rated when it's all said and done as the number one, number two, number three linebacker in the country. I have a lot of confidence in saying that that's going to be a guy like Xavier uh, Griffin at Gainesville High School, class of 2026. Um, pretty cool there. Pretty awesome there. Guys, we teased it. We teed it up. Now it's time, like we said, to put that – Put that white ball on the, on, on the tee and knock it down the fairway. Our question of the week, we hit, we hit it each and every week. We want to get you guys talking. We want to get you guys thinking. Uh, if you had the choice, what day would you choose for early signing day to take place on? You know, there's the one that's going to be in December. It seems like that's the movement of December. But do you feel like there needs to be one in the summer? Do you think it needs to be July. You think it needs to be August. You think it needs to be maybe October in the middle of the senior season. Uh, if, if you had the choice, I'd love to see what your response is there about what do you think needs to happen with early signing day in the future. If you're just joining us, our show tonight, uh, one of our one of our elements of our big five was we had uh, a discussion there on like, you know, they've moved it up. The early signing period no longer takes place in the middle of December now. It's the first week of December, right before the conference championship games. So Georgia's going to be signing a bunch of dudes after they, right before they face a Texas or they face a Ole Miss or they face an Alabama in the SEC championship game, something like that. Georgia's going to have to sign a bunch of dudes, and it's also going to take place for a lot of those elite players on those elite teams uh, it's going to take place in the middle of the state championship. Really, for most schools, most states in America, that's either going to be the semis or the, the, the semifinals are actually championship week. That's going to make it very bumpy. But, of course, that's what folks are trying to do when trying to worry about the 12-team playoff, trying to worry about trying to accommodate something taking place around uh, the transfer portal window opening already. December was just a mess. So, Love to see uh, what you guys feel, feel, think about that. I already see John McAleer, McAleer uh, signing in. He says, no summer signing day should be after conference championship games. That's his opinion on there. We've got a bunch of people on Twitter weighing in. Hunter Lacey says, uh, we need to go all in on recruit e- elite defensive line players. 
Um, <laughs> uh, go for three in 2023. He shares it, keeps it real. He says he blocks almost every recruiting site on Twitter for the offseason. Don't tweet about a guy who narrowed his list down to 15. Uh, you know, we got some people saying that, you know, until they slim it down to four, you know, they don't pay attention. Uh, interesting, uh, interesting uh, things going on right there. You got an opinion? What do you think? Is it good the way it is? Do you think it's better moving it away from mid-December when the transfer portal and the playoffs will be in full swing? Do you think there needs to be another one in the summer? There's some movement about adding another earlier signing day to the one in the summer, and that's got a lot of coaches. That's got a lot of people talking about what that may mean for college football and high school football uh, going forward right there. Guys, that has been your question of the week. Now it's time. We usually try to do something with this each and every week. Uh, we call it, we used to call it the meat and potatoes. I think sometimes we call it mac and cheese. I think this is the biscuits and gravy this week. That's what you know you're going to see on the table every Before the Hedges episode brought to you by Kroger. Of course, we're going to start taking a look at our recruiting Breakdown starting out with 2025. You got Bo Walker, uh, Bo Walker playing some baseball. He, he's sitting there, three sport athlete for Cedar Grove High School. Just saw his head coach, uh, his head coach, Coach Adams, uh, move on to the college football ranks. Going to take a job with Del McGee at Georgia Southern. John Adams certainly deserving. He becomes the third Cedar Grove High School football coach to move on to college football. Not just the players from Cedar Grove from that Proud Saints program moving on to college football on Saturdays. They're now on their third head coach that's now taking the job in college football. Uh, two tight ends committed, Ethan Barbour, Elias Williams, the five-star out of Camden uh, County High School. Ethan Barbour is at Alpharetta High School, Georgia, currently with one three-star on offense, one four-star on offense, and one five-star on offense so far in the class. Georgia a little pedestrian right now compared to most years. They only got they've only got five commitments at this time. They've seen a couple decommitments in this class at one time for most of last year. They were the number one recruiting class for 2025, but they've fallen down a little bit now. I believe they're number eight. Let's take a look at the defensive side of the ball, and then you really know that Kirby Smart and uh, Glenn Schumann and Travion Scott they haven't really even cracked their knuckles yet. When you can look at a Georgia. A defensive class right now and only see two guys. I think it'll be different this year. Georgia trying to find the right DBs, the right corners, the right safeties. They will go hard in the paint for the edge guys this year, but you know, defensive line and linebacker. The front seven, you know, maybe last year we saw where Georgia got so many special All-American secondary guys. Well, the 2025 class is going to have to be dominant up front, and it will be dominant up front in terms of the type of talent they're going to bring in to play inside the box in Athens. Currently right now, you've got uh, Georgia with one five-star in Justice J. Terry, one four-star in Jaden Perlotti. Everybody wonders about Jaden Perlotti. Is he going to stick in the class? Recently announced he's taking an official visit in June to check out Miami, but that's really not a harbinger of doom yet right there for Jaden because he's always said, man, just watch. I'm going to take my visits. I'm always going to take my visits. Uh, and then you, we got to bring up this point. I think it's a salient point for the 2025 class. Georgia, Georgia currently has a commitment from five-star Justice Terry, who my, in my mind, the way he worked at the Under Armour camp, he's dropped down to about 270 pounds. Uh, the way he worked, the way he looked fast, uh, developed, chiseled, uh, he looks to me like a top two, top three player in the country. Uh, I think right now his rankings have him around eight or nine in the country, but he definitely looks like a name that should be in consideration for the number one prospect in this class. And Georgia, should they be able to close things out with Elijah Griffin, they would have the number one defensive lineman in the country and the number two defensive line in the country, defensive line prospect in the country. And those dogs in Athens have never, ever done that. There's your class breakdown for 2025. Let's take a look at that recruiting snapshot currently. Just five commits, uh, eight rated, eight nationally, three on offense, two on defense. They're all from the state of Georgia. They're all inside SEC country. You currently have two offensive players. Excuse me, you've got two defensive players. You've got three offensive players in this class. You've got uh, two five-stars, two top 50 commitments, three top 100 commitments. You've got 
four in the top 150, and you got four in the top 200 right there. That's what, what the recruiting snapshot looks like. And now you want to get to the entree. We talked about the biscuits and gravy. Well, let's take a look right now at the four egg omelet, whatever you want to call it, with everything you want in it. These are our top early targets for 2025. Several new names. If I'm looking right there, I see at least three new names this week. Let's start with Dijon Lee. Uh, rated right at the five-star level as a corner out of Mission Viejo, California. Uh, length, big length. Georgia's already going to get an official visit for him. Next up is probably one of the hottest names with Georgia recruiting. Been that way for about two weeks now. Laganza. Hayward. He's out of Toombs County, Lions, Georgia. First time, you know, stand up, Toombs County, Lions, Georgia. Stand up. First time we've ever seen a Toombs County football player on any of our target lists for Georgia football recruiting here on Before the Hedges. Uh, next up, you got C.J. Wiley, a guy that I'm kind of expecting to be in Athens soon, potentially as soon as this week. This weekend, C.J. Wiley out of Milton, Georgia. We wrote about him on dognation.com this week. His dad, Chuck Wiley played for the LSU Tigers, and then he played with five different teams in the NFL. His mother was a track athlete at LSU as well. Older sister was is a volleyball signee at Georgia Tech. That Wiley family does not play when it comes time to play. Uh, excellence all up and down there. CJ's actually running track right now. <clears throat> he ran track over the weekend. Uh, I believe he hit a new PR at 6'4", 196. He ran an 11 flat in the 100. His goal is to get that 100 time down to like 10'5". That would be something for a six foot four wide receiver that um, caught 14 touchdowns for the Class 7A state champions. Zion Grady, 24-7 uh, sports composite, has him as the nation's number one edge. Out of Enterprise, Alabama, Moving down the list, Darren Ikigabon out of Hillside, New Jersey. Going to visit Georgia in uh, in the spring. Going to come back and visit Georgia in the summer on an official visit. He said after his last visit to Georgia that Georgia was his top school out of New Jersey. Isaiah Gibson, we mentioned him earlier on the show about those Georgia-Clemson battles out of Warner Robins. Um, number seven edge, I believe, in the country. Number top 80-ish overall prospect. Moving down to number nine, you got Josh Petty, Fellowship Christian, uh, th- number three offensive tackle in the country, five star. Really feels like it's Georgia, uh, also Auburn, Tennessee schools like that that are hitting hitting him up the most right now. He's got a lot of visits planned. He's going to go see Georgia. He's going to go see a lot of schools right there, and he's also one of those guys that has to put on a significant amount of weight uh, for his uh, senior football season. Finished second in the state in Class 2A in wrestling. And he's also actually overcoming right now, coming b- bouncing back from a, a slight hip fracture. Hip avulsion is what it's called, uh, medically termed right there. He's, he's going to be out about six to eight weeks, but will not miss spring practice. We wrote about Matt Zellers recently on dognation.com out of Royersford, Pennsylvania. Um, it's really, guys, I see Georgia signing one of three quarterbacks here. Matt Zellers is one of those. Uh, you're going to see the other two names on our top targets list as well. He's down to a final four of Penn State, Pitt, Missouri, and the University of Georgia. The two SEC schools are the ones he needs, still needs to learn the most about. Uh, going to visit Georgia. Uh, he's told me that he's got to get through his high school basketball season. Matt was actually spinning it this past weekend at a seven-on-seven tournament, but um, got to play some QB, but – he wants to try and uh, finish out his uh, junior season at basketball with his high school team, and then after he gets the jun- after that their last game of his junior season, he's going to work probably the next two days to make his visits and go visit all four of those schools within about ten days, and then he's going to make his decision sometime in early April after he's checked all those out, and then he will go visit the school he commits to on an official visit over the summer. That's the first half of your top early targets. Let's take a look at the second second list right there. And this one has kind of been pretty much static. You've got Julian Lewis, Juju Lewis. He's going to visit Georgia. He's going to visit Colorado. He's going to visit USC. He's going to visit Auburn. He's going to visit Alabama. Go check out a lot of schools there. Um, and he's going to probably take some more officials after that. But currently committed to USC. 
Carrollton High School, five-star quarterback, class of 2025, recently reclassified a couple months ago to the 20 from the 2026 class. You've got Juan Gaston Jr. He told us at the Under Armour Atlanta All-American Camp that he is going to visit Georgia. Um, Georgia is going to get his first official visit. He's going to visit Georgia during the spring as well. Cortez Smith told us earlier this week that uh, he's going to visit Georgia. One, one thing to look at with his list is he's got an unofficial visit plan, and then he's got an official visit plan. And Georgia and Miami are showing up on both of those lists right there. Uh, Cortez is you know, ready to start this thing going, ready to hit the sled on making his ultimate decision known. Uh, Travis Smith Jr. out of Westlake High School, that's a guy that uh, Coach James Coley has already prioritized in his first few First 10 days on the job. Travis still feels like a priority, the priority in the class. That's very important for Georgia to potentially sign a player of his stature. Zayden Walker, the number one linebacker in the country out of Sly County in Ellaville, Georgia. Um, he is going to be visiting a lot. You know, Miami's a school he likes there. Georgia's a school he likes there as well. So he's going to check out some schools as well. Georgia's going to get an official visit from Zayden this summer. And then the two guys at the top, the two headliners, we've talked about them a lot on the show. Elijah Griffin, number two, David Sanders, number one. Those are your top early targets for 2025. And you guys that are fans of variants, there wasn't a lot of them on that screen, but let's take a look at just off the list. That that one continues to grow. Uh, we've got, again, these are kind of just kind of scattered around. Um, these, game, these are not kind of rated. They're all presented, you know, slide by slide alphabetically here. Ryan Montgomery, that's a quarterback out of Finley High School, Finley, Ohio. He's currently playing basketball. He's at the same high school that Ben Roethlisberger came Edge out of uh, Alabaster, Alabama, not too far away from Tuscaloosa. Mason Short, really talented offensive lineman out of Evans High School in the CRA. Here's a new here's a new name on the list, Sam Turner. This is a guy that's not really even com not really even ranked by the services yet, but he picked up a Georgia offer earlier earlier this year. And you know, Sam's about 6'3", 190, great physical attributes, great length, great speed, great size, great catch radius and out of Southwest DeKalb. And this is very much a, you know, newbie type type list right now. When I think of Southwest DeKalb, I think of the great Quincy Carter. I think of Bud Godfrey, all those, all those names and all those great games of the past. And haven't really heard of Southwest DeKalb with Georgia recruits over the last 10, 15 years, but Sam's in the mix right there. Very impressive what he's been able to do so far. Eric Winters, his teammates with, uh, teammates with, uh, Zion Grady at Enterprise in Alabama. Really special, physical, active linebacker there. We've actually got two slides here on our just off the list. The last guy right here is out of Green County High School, Greensboro, Georgia. You want to talk about a guy that could play the interior defensive line, a guy that could play uh, zero, kind of play a shade nose or whatever. Big Kevin Wynn can do that. If you guys have seen his film, some of his workouts on posted on his social media, this is the guy that you want in the room when it, it's time to start flipping those 18-wheeler tires. Kevin Wynn's got kind of that big, strong back, got, got kind of that good old boy strength to be able to do that. Kevin Wynn out of Greene County in Greensboro, Georgia. Another name that's kind of just off the list right now, defensive line is so very vital for Georgia recruiting in this class. Got another slide of names right here to take a look as well. Anquan Newboy Fegans out of Alabaster, Alabama. That's the number three safety in the country. Thomas Blackshear out of Calvary Day in Savannah. Young man by the name of Bryce Davis, Greensboro, North Carolina. Going to make a couple of visits to check out Georgia uh, this spring and also this summer. Uh, Akeelan Deer uh, out of Quitman, Mississippi. That's a name to watch because right now it's going to be very hard to try and figure out what Georgia needs to do remaining at running back in this class. I think it was definitely a big miss to lose those relationships that Del McGee had built. So it's up to kind of Josh Crawford to kind of build those, build those names back up. Going to be really hard for in some spots with those top national targets that Georgia was going after. Dante Big Play Fulton, another different name out of Worth County in Sylvester, Georgia. Uh, Dante Fulton, I love his game. 
I love what he brings to the table. He has been a prolific uh, touchdown machine, touchdown creator. Um, many, 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 many big plays. Watch his film. He's got a lot of things that Georgia would like to find in its next great receiver. Christian Garrett, big defensive lineman out of Prince Avenue Christian, state champion Prince Avenue Christian at, out of Bogart, Georgia. Really like the way this young man works. Uh, Georgia has priorita- prioritized him for a very long time. He's about 6'3 and a half, about 280 pounds. Like we said earlier in the show, he's going to visit Clemson. He's going to visit Georgia with officials. I'm sure he'll visit a lot more, but he's a guy that you want to talk about keeping the best interior, the best defensive lineman, the best trench monsters in the state of Georgia. Well, Christian Gar- Garrett is an example of that. Christian Gass, uh, Eastside High School, uh, shout out Eric Stokes Jr., Covington, Georgia. Kind of rated as an edge, but what, what I'm hearing right now, Georgia's kind of recruiting him as an inside backer, a stack backer, not a pass rusher. And then another guy here, at linebacker, that can kind of play all over the field, Ty Jackson. Loved his film for a very long time, and Ty Jackson was recently, like the last couple of weeks or so, ranked by On3.com, the pure isolated On3.com rating, as the number one linebacker in the country. That's just off your list right there. We We'll kind of rip through all those right there uh, each and every week. Uh, you guys got any questions? You guys got anything going on right now? Feel free to drop them in the comments below. This is your live Q&A time right now. Uh, got some people weighing in on the uh, Xavier Griffin video. They said that he looks like he is, uh, he is, uh, he looks like he's 24. Uh, uh, Hunter Lacey weighs in. He says, whatever makes it easier on the coaches, uh, that's what he would like to see with the uh, early signing period movement. Desmond Thornton wades in and says late July. Uh, Deron Franklin, I like that. I like that. Uh, he says uh, he says thanks, and he said you have big peaches licked. Of course, that's the unofficial official mascot of Before the Hedges. That's the Centel family dog, uh, Peaches, the Golden Doodle. Uh, Eric D. Anquan Figgins, he's making a prediction. He says Anquan's going to Bama along with Jared Smith. Uh, interesting right there. Everybody's got it. Everybody. It's the time of year though. Time of year when everybody's like, you know, got to figure out a lot of where these big names are going to go play, play high school football. Go, excuse me, go play college football. Let me see. Let me hop over on Facebook. Let me see. Got any questions, comments right there. Um, Gump Noble, Philip, Philip Jordan Wells. I hop over to Facebook and the first thing I see is PJW. With Gump Noble. Uh, let's see. Uh, question. Uh, Phil Rogers. Wow. I know we like to have fun on this show, but that's something serious. Uh, Phil, uh, I think I speak for everybody here uh, watching, been watching hanging out every Wednesday night. But, man, Phil, thanks for being a part of the uh, Before the Hedges family. And we can't hopefully hope and pray that that's definitely going to continue. But I uh, uh, hope that aorta valve is uh, turns out to be five stars when you guys take a look at that uh, later this week. So uh, wish you nothing but the best, my friend, about all that, man. Um, let me see what else is going on. Yeah, uh, I saw that. Uh, I think, Ryan, I saw where uh, – Bo Walker did get an offer from Georgia State. And I tell you what, if <laughs> I'm kind of I'm kind of half kidding, but kidding. If if Dell can flip Bo Walker from the University of Georgia to Georgia State, an impeccable, uh, impressive recruiting resume would have a new new one at the top. If if Dell could do that, though. Um, let me see. Phil Rogers believes that uh, signing day should be back in February. Sonia Prescott uh, feels that this should be the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Interesting thought there. It's not too late, not too, too late. Uh, Lucy Bowers Bowiken says, no way, no how, no three signing days. Uh, Joey Register, good take here. He says, I think they need to just stick with December and February. Uh, The sport has changed so much, yet there needs to be more commitment and honor the commitment from the players. Uh, Ryan, hope you're doing great tonight as well. Uh, let me see. Uh, Wayne Folan has a thought that he thinks uh, Matt Zollers is going to 
wind up at Penn State. Let me see. Uh, Roy Roper railing in. Did we do everything? Do we lose anything? On, did we lose a live or anything like that? Do we go off for a second? If you guys can weigh in on that. Um. Oh, we lost the, we lost the feed on the Dog Nation website. Is that what you're saying there, Roy? Um, let me see. <laughs> Philip jo- F- PJW is dropping some. Uh, that's yeah, I, I don't mind an improv night in the middle of before the head just brought to you by Kroger. Um, Eric D. Hey man, I got you. I got you. I mean, hey man, I, I think a lot of these are kind of to be determined. I'm gonna be. Let me let me let me just break it down a little bit. I need I need maybe to have some break it down theme music here for a little bit, but. Um, this is the time of year where recruits may think they know, but it's just they think they know. What really is going to happen is they're going to figure out their recruiting uh, spring officials, spring unofficials. They're going to compare the vibe at school A, school B, school C. There's going to be NIL in the middle of this now. There's going to be opportunity. There's going to be a feeling. There's going to be a lot of that, man. And I think – I don't think – the schools don't know what they want. The schools don't know who they're prioritizing yet, except for a few names. And so I, th- I think everybody's kind of just kind of trying to figure a lot of that out. Uh, schools that have had very few turnover, I think Alabama's going to have a hard time, but I think uh, schools that have had very slight turnover like the dogs have in certain positions, I think they're going to be affected at running back, of course. But if, they're, if Georgia is ever going to be affected in, with running back recruiting for at least a couple months out of a cycle – this is probably the optimum one to do that because Del McGee stocked that running back room up with three All-Americans in the class of 2024. So I don't know if Georgia needs to. They'd probably take the right two running backs, but they feel gleefully happy with Bo Walker right now as the running back in the class. And then receiver's going to be receiver. I think Coley is a type of guy that can be a mastermind at recruiting. He can kind of catch Georgia up, pick up the pace, fill in the gaps, whatever you want to say. I don't think Georgia will suffer there in terms of uh, rebuilding connection, rebuilding relationships, because Coley's very adept at that. I think the big thing there is that Coley's got to figure out is how he gets a top five type talent at wide receiver to come to the University of Georgia when very heavy price tags for that right now in the NIL game. What's going on right now? with everything Georgia football recruiting uh, for the week of March the 6th, 2024. Guys, that has been your intel. I'm Jeff Sintel. Everybody be well out there, and we'll see you again on the pages of dognation.com. 